welcome to a new sewing video. Today I have a project that I hope will be really quick and simple and beginner friendly. So if you've seen my last sewing video where I made a linen dress, I got sent a little bit more fabric than I ordered and definitely more than I needed for the project. So I still have quite a substantial amount of linen left, but it is all cut up. So I thought this would be perfect to make an apron out of. I am collecting more and more linen dresses. Something that I also really really love is the look of a linen dress, like a long flowy linen dress with an apron over it. I feel like that goes perfectly with the whole kind of cottage core aesthetic uh, that I really really like right now. So yes, that's what I want to try and do today. I have a little bit of an idea of how I want the finished thing to look. I haven't completely thought out how I'm gonna make it. But I guess that's just kind of how I do things. I make it up as I go along and then I realize what I could have done better in hindsight. What I want is a gathered skirt that I want to come almost all the way to the back. I want to have a flap in the front here, a very simple square one I think, and then I want to have straps. And if I can, if I have enough fabric, I would really like to make some ruffles along the bottom of the skirt. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna start by cutting out all of my pieces, trying to lay everything out on this fabric, figure out how much I need for all the different elements. Assembly for this one shouldn't be too complicated, aside from maybe the waistband, but let's cut everything out first. is the skirt bit and to measure this out I did one and a half times my waist for the width so that I can gather it up a little bit and make it a bit more voluminous and then for the length I measured from my waist to my knee plus a few centimeters seam allowance and that is um, the size of my rectangle so I'm gonna cut that out and see how much I have left for everything else that I wanted to do <laughs> In which I had best proceed from now on is to start by making the straps so that would be just to fold them sew along here turn them inside out and iron ruffle the ruffles attach the ruffles to the skirt finish all the edges on those um, then attach the straps to the body flap what you call that <laughs> this bit then ruffle the skirt and attach the skirt to the top including the waistbands I'm just gonna pull my sewing machine out and start sewing and finishing everything and then at some point we'll assemble. <laughs> this project is all over the place but it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna just need to make everything and then attach everything. If there's something kind of specific or more complicated I will come back and let you know. Everybody keeps telling me to do French seams since my machine only does a straight stitch and I don't have a serger or any other kind of way to finish my seams other than hand sewing them. Um, so I'm gonna try a French seam. I feel like this is the perfect opportunity. My ruffled bottom of my skirt and the skirt itself and I want to attach these. So when you're doing a French seam you sew once and you attach it like that and then you flip it inside out and you sew again. Basically you attach the pieces wrong sides together, stitch, then attach the right sides together, 
and stitch again. And that should put the raw edges inside of your seam, which sounds great, especially for something like this. So I'm gonna try it, see how it turns out. There's a first time for everything. You know how in every project there's one thing that I attach backwards? It happened, um, so we've got that over with. <laughs> I had to redo my little ruched edge once because I did attach it in the opposite direction, but here is my first French seam and I must say I'm a fan. This is definitely something I'm going to be doing more often. It was way quicker than hand felling everything and I really like how it looks. Here you can see this is the inside of the seam and then this is the outside. Perfect, super neat finish, very quick and easy to do. I have that now and I thought I would just show you how I do my gathers. So I have the top of the skirt here, which I want to gather down to the size of my waist minus 10 centimeters. I want to leave those 10 centimeters to uh, leave room, you know, to tie the waistband. Basically what I do for that is I make two rows of basting stitches, which uh, is done by setting the sewing machine to the longest stitch length. And you want to do two or three rows of that. And then you take the bottom thread. So you take your bottom thread and then you should be able to just slide the fabric over that. And that is how you make gathers. So now you just have to do this all the way to the center. And I do find that it's usually easier to just gather it up as small as it'll go and then spread it out to the desired length. So I am gonna do that. Just get this all the way to the center. Then do the same thing from the other side with the other end. And then I can get it to the right length which would be about 60 centimeters for me, I think. And that will be my skirt done. And then I'll just have to attach it to the waistband and the top. attaching all the straps to the front bit and this is where it gets a little bit complicated so I wanted to just come on and explain because um, the plan is to have this with the waistband attached to it and I want to take the skirt and kind of pinch it in between here like between the um, top and the waistband the waistband isn't going to run all across the front because uh, I didn't have enough fabric, so the waistband is going to start on the sides of the front bit. So I want to pinch the skirt underneath both of these. So in order to be able to do that, I can't just sew a straight line all the way down. I have to make sure this is still open. So I have um, my top bit inside out. I already attached the shoulder straps. So those are tucked inside here because I'm doing it obviously in reverse. This is the final waistband that I still need to attach. So I have pinned my two sides of the top bit together and then here it splits and my waistband is um, attached like that. I don't really know how to explain it any better than you can see here. So I'm just going to sew along this line up until this point. I put a pin where the waistband ends, right there. So I'm going to sew up until there. And then I'm just gonna sew this and this. And that's kind of how I did it on this side as well. 
and it seems to have worked quite well. And then I can just attach the skirt to one side, um, so that with the machine, and then I'm gonna probably do the other side by hand to get the neatest finish. But yeah, that's kind of how I'm attaching the straps. I'll show you what this comes out looking like from the right side in a minute. There we go, it's all attached. So I think I'm just gonna give this a quick iron and then I'm gonna try and insert the skirt, which I have already gathered to the right length. So that's just gonna go in between these little flaps here. And that will be pretty much the finished product. Just a few finishing details, but let's iron this first. I changed my mind on the waistband. I decided to just fold it in and I'm gonna stitch all of this by machine so that the only things I have to do by hand are this bit where the bodice is, I guess, or where the skirt is attached and the very ends of it and everything else I'm just gonna top stitch by machine. That's gonna save me a lot of time. So a little, little cheat here, but I don't think that will be too bad in the finished result. I am very nearly finished. My straps are finished and attached and all sewn shut. So the last thing I need to do is to attach this, the straps to the back. And since I can't sew them into the waistband because it was uh, folded, I have decided to actually make it a feature and just um, attach them with a button. Although after that green dress, I really don't want to make another buttonhole. So for now, I'm just gonna do a fake button and just, um, you know, stitch it through here. And maybe one day, if I do get that vintage button maker, which a lot of you guys suggested I get, um, and I would really love to, I just have to find one, I might do an actual buttonhole, but I think I'm just gonna attach it with just a fake button for now. And that is actually the last thing I need to do. And then I, it just needs a quick iron and I'll be finished. I'm really excited. So I'm gonna see if I have a cute button that matches this. It is finished and I couldn't be more excited. I feel like I look like a movie character. It is just, oh, <laughs> I love it. It's exactly what I wanted. I wouldn't have minded if the skirt was a bit fuller, but this is the full width of fabric. So there just wasn't any more room, I guess. Maybe if I had ended the skirt a bit more to the front, but then it wouldn't have gone far as, you know, so far back, and I do actually like that. I don't think I would have liked this gap to be any bigger, so all in all, I am very, very happy. I went for some large, round, round. <laughs> I was gonna say large wooden buttons. Of course they're round. Um, I'm not very happy with these. It was the best choice out of everything I had at home at the moment. But I'm probably gonna go out and get some coconut buttons in a slightly smaller size because I do think they're a little bit big for this position but the only other ones I had are like exactly this size. So yeah, I, I went for these. The crossed over straps, I forgot that I need to attach these at an angle. So there's a little bit of bunching up here. I might just go back and fix that at a later time, but oh, I just, I am so happy. <laughs> I absolutely adore this. I just, I love it. I'm also very happy with the way it is finished. I feel like this is one of my better pieces when it comes to how it's finished, um, how it looks and everything. I am very pleased with that and I will definitely be wearing this. I feel like I should go milk a cow or something. I do think this one is good for beginners. There are a couple of complicated things, but nothing, you know, too difficult, I think. So yeah, definitely if you're a beginner and you like this, Go ahead and give it a try. It's definitely one of the easier, simpler things I've done. So I really hope you enjoyed this video, guys. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for loads more beauty and lifestyle content. There is another video here that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching again, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!